Hello and welcome to Knobcat Games Dungeons of the Obelisk podcast. I'm your host, Joe Sleppy. I'm Executive Prime at Knobcat Games. <laughs> and if this is your first time tuning into the podcast, this is an audio devlog where we get together every two weeks and we chat about the progress of our game, Dungeons of the Obelisk, which is a 2D turn-based dungeon crawling loot grinding adventure. And uh, I'm joined today by our Animancer, Nike Deer. And a new addition to the team, our, our new universe architect, Josh Otterman. Hello, good to meet you. And uh, yeah, I guess we're just going to, this is going to be uh, less of a going through the recent changes and we're going to maybe just talk to Josh about what he's going to be doing here and, you know, kind of free will it. Do you want to introduce yourself to everyone, Josh? Uh, sure. Yeah, I could do that. So my name is Joshua Otterman. I am a game developer. Uh, I've been doing game development for a little over a year now. I'm 33 years old. I've uh, got uh, a wife and two kids, uh, two boys, and been yeah working on uh, this one project called Alchemon for about a year, and been really enjoying doing that and learning about game development. I wasn't always a game developer. Uh, when I graduated from high school, I decided to be a creative writer, a creative writing major. Uh, did that, and then worked at a potato salad factory for four years after that, uh, <laughs> which was not what I was hoping to do with my creative writing degree, but, um, you know, you do what you gotta do, and then, yeah, I actually decided that I thought I wanted to be a pastor for a little while, so I went to seminary for six years, finished that, realized that was not what I was supposed to do. And then I went into a boot, uh, programming boot camp and became a game developer and have been like super, super blessed and lucky to be able to actually be working in the game development field. Um, so I'm very happy about that and really happy to be able to work on projects like this one. Yeah, and it's it's awesome to have you. Um, you know, I'm glad that you're so excited about, you know, getting our servers set up. Yes. You know, that's something that we've been looking forward to for a while. I think it's going to be... That, that first time I log in and I can see like Nike's character <laughs> standing there and talk to her, it's gonna be I'm gonna lose my mind. Yeah, I'm really excited to uh, help help you guys get that set up. I kind of see myself as a support character in most of areas of my life, and so I feel like working on the back end and the servers is basically just me casting cool spells that let you guys do cool things. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a great way to look at it like a support <laughs> character yeah uh so what am i i guess i'm dps or something huh are you i don't, I don't know yeah <laughs> uh i believe you or are you the tank i don't know i don't know how far this analogy can go <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i've been happy kind of nerding out about uh back-end systems and databases and servers and stuff like that for the last uh like week and a half since you since you brought me on the team, so I'm quite excited about it, and I I end up spending a decent amount of the time as I'm like falling asleep at night thinking about like how can we get this stuff working. <laughs> That's awesome. I think about this game like nonstop. That's like my my. I love to get on this podcast and talk about it and have our meetings and talk about it and <laughs> uh, bug Nico and discord about it <laughs> uh, so it's it's awesome you know everybody on the team is like so excited about it I, I i say this quite often but i think that's what's gonna make this game so successful is you know we all just want to make it and play it and and enjoy it and you know you're new to the team but i still feel like we're just like a bunch of friends making a game you know it doesn't feel like a business or a company or something like that mm -hmm. yeah uh, when i first met you i definitely was really excited 
just because of the dynamic that you like let off um, the interview with and just uh, you know being able to kind of be casual but at the same time really focused on getting this you know passion project um, actually up and running yeah for sure I don't know. It's been exciting. Uh, we've been, I usually say this at the beginning, but I think we're at 16 months of development, you know, since we officially started and I got the LLC and everything. So, so it's, it's like roughly like a year and a half at this point, right? Yeah. Cause we started in July of 21. Mm, yeah. Oh, but yeah, Nika, I was saying uh, in the Discord, I posted it. Nobody said anything, but it's been like one year. It showed up in my memories, the first GIF of the, the glub moving around. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's right. I, I think I saw that, but it was like, I guess it was just a screenshot from Facebook, right? It was what I had saved on my phone. That's oh. why I like saw it, that it was a year. So it might have been a couple days off because like maybe sometimes you send stuff and then like I'll grab it off Discord for like a post or something a day or two later, but it's pretty close. Yeah, you're usually pretty quick about it, so it's probably around the time. Wow. Because <laughs> yeah, I think you animated the character first, the, like the yeah. player character, and then and then went on to the glub. So it wasn't the first thing we did, but it was the first mob. Yeah, I think I think when I animated the character, like we didn't even really have the character finished yet. We just kind of had like a, a placeholder, and we like animated that and rigged it up. And then I think I think the glove might have been that first first mob we did after that. I remember when we first you were first animating the character, and we were like talking about it. And uh, I remember having like not a fight, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what the word would be. I was like saying like he doesn't have to have elbows and knees. Yeah. <laughs> Do like, you remember? That? I was yeah, like, like you're going too stuff. hard on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the thing because I was like, oh my goodness, I'm doing animation on a real game, and I was like pressuring myself like crazy. And then you were like, no, that's too much. We need to step back a little. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. The thing with the player characters, they change clothes so often oh, that yeah. if you have like their legs bending or their elbows and stuff then it it can warp you know if we yeah. have like different armors and stuff so we had that like discussion i always like remember that i remember like right <laughs> where i was at at my day job and like typing in discord about that nah but like that was a really good learning experience too because like i do tend to go like I kind of overshot what I thought the quality need to be, I mean, I had like way too many joints and I had too much like deformation going on, but <laughs> now it's pretty consistent, like, we, we did like one revision since we started and I want to say it's mostly there, like I, I need to take some notes if I see anything else, but I wasn't really noticing any problems last time I was playing with it animation wise. Yeah, and, and the mobs look so good like you finished animating our newest mob which is mo oh yeah it's the uh, mob based on the on a mosquito for the uh, swamp mm -hmm. breach and you posted those in in our discord um you haven't posted them anywhere like oh, yeah. public yet have you no i haven't shared them even to the instagram yet so that'll probably okay. be the next thing I'd, i do i'd say by the time this is out we'll we'll have posted that you can <laughs> put it in the uh the public discord first i think oh for sure actually that makes a lot of sense i should yeah, honestly so post like cross post to there more often with with the instagram stuff maybe yeah we want to have keep our discord active if we can i am planning on <laughs> i've been saying I, I know what happened like i say that i'm gonna like do a new video <laughs> and then i say it for like four weeks in a row until i finally get it done but uh, I think I'm actually going to do that this weekend get a new uh, gameplay video up with all the new changes and stuff. But uh, yeah, anyways, how'd the, uh, how'd the Mo go? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a lot of fun. Initially, just trying to figure out how to make the wings flap was like my first first task. So I was like, okay, it's a bug. It's different than like that bat mob we did a while back. And so I was like, it needs to look like it's moving really fast and needs to kind of skitter around, you know, kind of bug-like. So I tried to make its movements very, like, fast and snappy. And uh, <laughs> I'm pretty happy with how it came out. The rig was uh, a little challenging because 
even the rat is like vaguely humanoid because it has like four limbs and whatnot but this shape for the mosquito was very unique so kind of having to figure out how to make the bones line up right without causing weird de- deformation was was kind of fun a uh, little bit of a challenge but not too bad so i feel like <laughs> it looks so good i like i feel like you were like outside like looking at real mosquitoes and <laughs> like like, <laughs> like what are they mean, called like method acting you're like method you're not, animating you're not far off i mean i will <laughs> sometimes i will literally like be like how does this thing move and then i'll type into youtube like footage of this thing running and then if i can find anything i'll study it and <laughs> um i actually i've been watching the animations for uh, the Pokemon Stadium games a lot lately for inspiration. Mm. Like, just finding compilations oh, yeah. on YouTube I and see. just seeing how the characters move and interact and stuff. It's, it's pretty simple because they have to do, like, a bunch at once, but they still have to add enough personality to make them unique, so... Yeah, and what? they do have that kind of, like, disappearing when they <laughs> faint or whatever as well. Yeah. Like they kind of, you know, they retreat into their pokeballs, and then with us, they kind of just like shrink away. But it's pretty similar. <laughs> I'm looking at the animations right now. Yeah, they they look really really good. Oh, thanks. I I didn't know if I'd even I di- didn't know if I'd get them done to not, uh, last night. But I just I kind of got like a creative burst, and I was like, well, if I'm already here working on it, let's just let's finish it up. And I knocked out the last few. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, get it done, get that money. For sure. Also, <laughs> also um, on the topic of things I've been doing, uh, our Instagram just hit 800 followers last night. So Wait, 800? Yeah. Are you kidding me? No, so it was any of y'all like listening, thank the you so much. Yeah, no, I was looking at last night, and it was like in the high 700s, and I was like, wouldn't it be crazy if it was 800 by tomorrow, and then it, it hit 800 last night, and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I hope like at least ten percent of those are like real people sure. that actually <laughs> that like, actually check us out. I've some of them like I've had some like cool interactions with like other game devs and stuff, but like I don't know what that's going to translate into player wise. So it will be interesting to see. I I had one person who seemed really interested in our game, but they were. Uh, I think they were Ukrainian or something. I, I need to put it into like Google Translate, and I was like, oh, it's cool if this person found our game somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, man. Like, translating the game into other languages, I don't think we're going to be able to do that right at the start, but I've been... I think we said this last podcast, you guys weren't there, but I try really hard to make sure, like, I I have, like, a couple rules that I make TJ follow when he's putting, like, text in the game, and it's, like, no abbreviations, so if someone doesn't have English as their first language, they can actually Google or look up that word and see what it means, and, like, you know, so no abbreviations and, like, proper capitalization and all that kind of stuff, so hopefully it's not too bad. A lot of people know English that's, as a second language. For sure. That's really good forethought to do that ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. I was saying this on the last podcast too. Maybe you guys can help me think of the word, but like it gives our game like a specific vibe that like, you know, everything's, you know, proper like text and, and formatted like a certain way and stuff. And I think it just really adds to the feel of it. You know, like when you're playing, you, you know, like you're going to, everybody's going to call it speed, but it's dexterity. So it always says dexterity in the game, but like, you know, everybody's going to have their like slang for it and stuff. But like the game is really like proper and strict on like the terminology and how we word things. Yeah, very cohesive. It sounds like, (laughs) I mean, it definitely gives it more depth. I think when everything's consistent and seems to have that level of forethought to it to borrow that phrase yeah did either of you get a chance to play the new build that tj put up on thursday uh not yet no oh no yeah i haven't had the chance to actually uh play it yet but i'm gonna do that probably uh tonight or tomorrow (laughs) all right on we should have recorded later then so we could actually talk about uh (laughs) that's uh trying to think of uh what 
else got in the game. Oh, the one thing you'll notice is the breach is kind of there, but it's messed up and you can't actually play it yet. <laughs> That's one of the bigger things, but he started working on that breach that, that Mo is going to be a mob in. So that's one of the more exciting ones. Yeah, for sure. Like we've mostly just been showing off the uh, the sewer location so far. So mm. that breach is really exciting. Yeah, he added the uh, jeweler that makes you the astrolabe so you can navigate nice. your way in the breach. <laughs> so now you can actually get astrolabes in the game instead of it just always saying zero at the top. I guess we can do a shorter podcast because I feel like I've run out of things <laughs> to actually to- actual topics that we haven't already discussed. Is this our? Uh, is this sure. going to be like our last one for the year, technically? Or no, we're going to do the beginning of next month as well. Cool. So we'll do like the same thing next month, like the first week or whatever it ends up being, and then we'll record two, so we don't have to like record on Christmas. By then, I'll have some like actual work done, and not just like the planning stages for the back end stuff too. So that'll be that'll be fun. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that'll be good. Yeah, like so. We talked a lot a little bit before, but maybe for the listeners, we can bring back the "What are you working on right now?" segment. <laughs> what's your What's your next step or your first step, Josh, for like getting a server? Because like I don't know anything about it, so I assume it's probably interesting to the listeners as well. Sure. Uh, so the service I've been uh, looking at is called uh, Playflow. It's a Unity engine specific service that basically lets you. Actually, I think you might be able to use it with other things besides Unity. I don't want to pigeonhole them uh, accidentally. But um, it's basically like the service that allows you to purchase um, servers and potentially even like purchase a plan to scale and start up servers as needed uh, with your game build in it. And um, the nice thing about them is they have a free tier so that we can use that for de- while we're doing development be able to test things out and just make sure that everything with the server and the client is you know hooking up correctly and everything's working with the logic so that's basically my goal is to get that figured out uh between like how the server is going to handle doing all of the logic that needs to stay up there so that you know cheating can't happen but also um have the client like direct and uh, communicate what it wants the server to do for it so that it can do that and then set back the information um, and sync different things. Like there's a, like syncing the animations for, for instance, across uh, in, during the town so that like everybody's animations for their characters and their movements will you know, be visible to anybody who's playing on that, in that town. Um, so that's going to be one of the first things uh, that I'll be diving into here. And then, uh, the other thing that I am really excited to work on is uh, getting the chat system up and running. Because that's kind of a new thing for me, but I uh, have a have a plan as to how to implement it. And I'm really excited to uh, get that going. That's going to be exciting. I haven't actually thought much about the UI of the chat in game. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't, I don't know. I guess we'll probably have like some windows or something. I guess there might be a world chat that's just in one of the corners. Sure. I'm not sure. We'll have to think about that one, I guess, but see what our options are. Yeah. And like, as far as like my, my job for setting it up, it should be able to work with whatever kind of UI design that you guys would like to make. Yeah. Yeah. It would be cool to have like tabs or something that can open and close so you can talk to different people and you know, close the world chat if you want and that kind of thing. Yeah, I think that um, stuff like that should be uh, definitely possible. Yeah, I always feel like world chat is really toxic. So I might be, <laughs> I'll have to test it out. I'll get on there and complain about stuff. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then I'll, I'll block you and then uh, we'll see if it then, works. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So what, what are you thinking about working on next, Nika? Well, um, I've got that animation to-do list, and we just finished uh, Mo, so I guess it's just a matter of, like, what we need done, like, if there's anything that needs to be prioritized sooner than later, otherwise I'll probably just start on the next mob. Uh, let me pull up that list list real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, We I'd say we knock out all the mobs for the breach, that way we can actually sure. have that automa- animated and, and working. And then um, 
then we'll get into other aspects of the game that, that need it but aren't quite as critical. For sure. Um, I know the, the frog mob is going to use the same animation, hopefully, as the uh, the toad pet <laughs> or, yeah. or companion. So, like, you'll have to do those at the same time. And we actually have the uh, the pipsqueak, the, the mouse... Um, companion so you'll probably hopefully you can just go back and and throw the the puke rat animations onto that For new sure. design from ben and oh my god that was such a cute design i really like the uh companion rat um, <laughs> goodness i guess i could looking at the list i see we have uh the snack enemy coming up oh yeah snack i guess i could do that one next maybe or really yeah, any of that these. one's gonna be wild. I think with all the like, it, I just <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait to see what you do with a snake. Yeah, that's just gonna be like a big wild noodle I get to animate. <laughs> 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 I'm looking forward to it. That's gonna be really fun. <laughs> Although on, honestly, all of these look pretty fun. I'm excited to see like like we were saying with the companions, like getting to the point where they're animating too is gonna be really cool. Yeah, and following you around in the dungeon. That's gonna mm -hmm. be so good. It's it's such a simple feature having like another character or another companion creature like following you around, but it like it never fails to make like whatever game I'm playing that much better. I love it. I love like playing like Final Fantasy like fourteen, the bit I've played of it, and like mm -hmm. running around with like these weird little critters and stuff is always cool. I think I had something that like yeah. looked like a little fennec or something. I can't remember what that was called. It's a carbuncle? I love Final yeah, Fantasy XIV. Yeah, I think it was carbuncle, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, see, what happened is I was playing the uh, the free version with, with one of my partners for the longest time, and then I bought a month of it, and then once that month ended, I found out you can't go back to the free version. I'm like, ah, yep. oh, I gotta pay more for it. So I just, I haven't played it in a long time, but I liked what I played. It was really fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's basically the same for me. Every once in a while, I, I go back and I play for a month, but then I realize I'm not playing enough to be paying for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's definitely a feature I'm looking forward to and looking forward to like seeing the animations for it. I'm, I'm also, like, I don't want to jump to the frog character just yet because i know that's probably going to be a little further down but uh it's gonna be fun seeing the, the companion frog jumping around so i'm excited to do those animations when i do but yeah all in good time <laughs> yeah it's gonna be good we also have uh i think there's also snappington is the, yeah. the turtle mob as well uh, are we gonna have a turtle companion as well? um well the the plan is like every one after launch depending on how fast ben can draw stuff and oh, and how much money the game makes you know once we start um that's going to determine a lot of what we can develop you know if we don't make any money and then i'm out of money <laughs> then then uh you know yeah. the game might have some trouble but i, I don't think that's going to happen but you know depending Anyways, long story short, I'm hoping that every two weeks we can introduce either a new companion or a new artifact and like kind of swap between the two. Nice. So each month you get like a new new one, new set or something. There's lots of, I have lots of designs for companions and artifacts. One of the ones I'm really excited about, there's two that I really can't wait to do, but I also want to wait to do them because I want them to, you know, get launched into like a game where they're they can be good you know so like there's one that's uh gonna be a cat named jeremy and then there's also the uh the possum one that i want to do that's that's going to be named lazarus nice. we need a possum in the game for sure <laughs> <laughs> that was the one i told you where he's gonna have like different modes where each turn he decides what he's gonna do and he's either gonna like play dead uh, scream or oh, I can't remember what the third one is I gotta look it up okay so he's gonna have three modes one the first one's playing dead that that increases your crit chance then he's gonna have looking cute which uh, increases your mana regenerate and then he's gonna have rowdy screaming that increases your double attack nice. 
Nice. So he swaps around like his three modes each turn or something like that. And obviously we'll have to test it and see what works, but that's the plan. That's awesome. <laughs> But yeah, I guess if if you either of you have anything else we want to talk about, otherwise I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, I, I I guess I'm pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Put you on the spot like that. <laughs> oh, you're fine. <laughs> Yeah, I can't think of anything either. All right. Well, in that case, thank you for listening to this episode. If you've made it to the end of this episode and you're not in our Discord somehow, you got to go to knobcat.com, find the link to the Discord, and, and come in and join us. Talk to us. Ask us questions. Give us things you want to hear or don't want to hear on the podcast. We also have a twitter which has nowhere near as many um followers as our instagram that the nike runs not to date this podcast but twitter's going down the hole i think but uh yeah. <laughs> anyways <laughs> you can follow us there they're both at dungeons obelisk and i guess we'll see you all in two weeks bye bye bye